Memorial Day is time to honor those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice to protect our nation's freedom. Fitting then, the Navy is here. Syracuse tries to end the Navy dream, led by the game's most electrifying player, senior attackman Mike Powell. The Navy mids say they are ready for Mike Powell and then some. We come back in this locker room, there's only one thing that I want to be able to look at every man's eye and say, we held nothing back. We left it all on the field. All right? Let's get a good one. Let's go, Blue! Let's go. Yeah, boys. Don't. 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 Walk on this field if you are not ready to play, because we are. This team takes the field with a determination to win. I'm not here to worry about the guy on the other side of the ball. I'm on this field to control what I do. That's it. The player in front of me is not my opponent. The opponent is myself. I will run hard. I will hit hard. I will shoot hard. I will hustle to every ground ball. I will respond to the challenge because I have prepared a lifetime. When you are on the field, you play with courage. This is the legacy and spirit of the cross, of the players that have competed in this game. A courage drives you to win. A courage that delivers the ultimate victory. The 2004 Division I Men's NCAA Lacrosse Championship. Let's play. Syracuse does not want to see Navy win its first ever NCAA lacrosse title. The Orange has been here before, looking for their third crown of the decade ninth overall. The midshipmen say they're playing not only for themselves, but for the men and women of the Navy and Marine Corps all over the world, especially in the Middle East. MNC Bank State in Baltimore is home to the NFL's Ravens, where star linebacker Ray Lewis brought this city a Super Bowl. But this Memorial Day, cause lacrosse takes over. We started with four teams in our national semifinal to stand Syracuse and Navy. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Championship Day here in Baltimore. Glad you could join us. Dave Ryan and Quinn Kessner. Quinn, today we will crown the lacrosse king of college lacs. Great matchup, really a dream matchup. Syracuse, the best offense in the nation. Navy tops defensively. These two teams have two of the most charismatic players on each end of the field. For Syracuse, it's all about Mike Powell. Over 300 career points. He's the most dominant player of his generation. Creative, explosive. He has skill power and willpower. Now the story for Navy, sophomore goalie Matt Russell inserted into the lineup in week three. He's compiled a 14-1 record since that game. He plays with uncommon energy, extremely quick and fearless between the pipes. First time since 1975, Quint and 80 fans have had a chance to watch their mitts in a lacrosse championship game. They have never won an NCAA title. Mike Powell will try to keep that trend going for Syracuse and win his second championship of his brilliant career. Named the first team All-American today. Head to head with Mitch Hindler. Bazanko and Phil on defense will have their hands full with Brian Lee and Crockett. Dolly for Syracuse had five goals at career high in the semifinal win over Hopkins. Ben Bailey is headed for flight school in a couple of days. He drives to Pensacola, Florida to start his career as an Navy ensign. Ian Dingman just one assist Saturday in the semifinal win over Princeton. Joe Boston from Skinny Atlas, New York, just outside Syracuse, will try to take care of his hometown orange. The Petro right and Ditzel long sticks for Syracuse on close defense. We'll try to bring home a championship again to Central New York. Our two coaches, John Desco, six years at Syracuse University, has taken the team to five championships. Strategically brilliant game plan in the semifinals. And Richie Mead from the Naval Academy talked about putting his team through Marine land zone training in the fall and how that set the stage for the dramatic turnaround at the Naval Academy. Face-off, such a crucial part of the game of lacrosse. Chris Prezanka for Navy in the goal. Danny Brennan, the freshman for Syracuse, both brilliant through three NCAA games. And our championship game from Baltimore is underway with a Navy possession. Tremendous crowd here today, up to 40,000 expected. After almost 47,000, watch the semifinal Saturday here under a sparkling sunny day in Baltimore. Today, a little bit hazy, a little foggy and rainy, but the goals are crystal clear for Syracuse and the Mids to try to bring home a national championship. The Naval Academy, about 30 minutes down I-97, this place is packed with Navy fans. They should, Quint, have the home field advantage. 
Billy Looney, right hand cradle for Navy. As the higher seed, second ranked team gets the home jerseys today. Syracuse, second ever appearance in the all orange. A brand new unis and helmets debuted as Bailey carries against Hopkins, the top seed Saturday. And a convincing 59 Syracuse win. Nice work. Jared Park, far side, head to head with Bailey, takes it away. And the Orange had their initial possession of his championship game. Jared Park, the two-sport athlete, plays on the Orange soccer team. One of the best all-around athletes in college and cross. And showing us why, trying to split the double team, but lost the ball, ground ball loose for Gill. Randall and Navy. Down the mid, take advantage, unsettled situation, Gill carries. Whistle first, it's waved off. No goal. There's a flag at midfield by the substitution box. Take away the tally for the mids. It will not count. Technical hold call. And a 30-second man up, upcoming here. Mids will have a six on five. They're the on-field officials today. That is Ed Schreiber on the left. John Desco, Syracuse coach, bidding for his third title. Replacing the legendary Roy Simmons Jr. at the Carrier Dome up in Syracuse. Gets the explanation. Both coaches looking for some clarifications. Some keys for today's championship game for Syracuse faceoffs. It's Brennan against Pazanka. I thought Syracuse in the semifinals, terrific in the way they changed some defenses. They played man-to-man, -man, they played some zone, and they also used some shutoff. For the Naval Academy, the goaltending battle is essential. It's Matt Russell against Jay Pfeiffer. Five Pfeiffer with some incredible NCAA performances. And the run and gun. Anytime you play Syracuse, I think it's important that you counterattack Orange transition with some transition of your own. Man up, half a minute for the mix. First man up opportunity. Syracuse was three of six in the national semifinal game against Hopkins. Maybe eighth best man up unit in the nation. Bailey. Feeds around the perimeter of the box. Burrs no right-handed cradle. In front he goes for Dingman. Bailey some time. Scores! Ben Bailey. Man up goal. Icebreaker of our national championship game. Navy has a lead. Ensign Ben Bailey commissioned on Friday. The pass was intended for the big target inside, Dingman. And Bailey just snags it. He's from Memphis, Tennessee. 20 high school programs in the state of Tennessee. Bailey zings that from about 14 yards. 20th tally of the year for Ben Bailey, who in two days' time will drive to Pensacola, Florida to start his training for flight school. Round ball at midfield. Panarelli with a long stick. A former high school All-American. True freshman for Syracuse trying to gain possession. Still no one has it. Booted around a bit. The Petro going for it. Right on that end line. Ball still in play. Finally a whistle. These and players the can't call. even hear the whistle, Dave. There was a whistle on the far side. That's how loud it is right now. It was a 10-second violation, I believe, against the Naval Academy. 10 seconds to get into the restraining box. Cross that white line with possession. After the draw, very it's similar, unsuccessful. Very similar to 10 seconds in basketball. And the Orange will try to break the ride defense and will do so successfully. First possession of the game for them. Here's Doherty, number one for Syracuse. Tops in scoring in the semis. Career best five goals. And the transfer from Hofstra. And yes, Mike Powell's on the field, folks. 22 in Orange. He's behind the Navy cage right now. Most athletic player you may see ever on a lacrosse field. It's his final collegiate game today. Shot from Lindsay, the first team All-American just named today. Whistles wide. Our two goalies today. Matt Russell, the sophomore from Connecticut. 
tutored by the great Greg Tritrano, who played at Brown, and Ray Fink, Finnegan, his assistant coach. And Jay Pfeiffer, talk about a guy who's cool, he's calm, he's unfazed by the harsh spotlight. Eight and one in NCAA playoff games. I love his ball handling skills. He's a lefty. He takes a low-key approach, and that's worked real well with his inexperienced defense. Darty for Crockett. Crockett dies, scores! Oh, what a move by Brian Crockett of Syracuse. The sophomore attackman from Yorktown, New York. Initial tally of the game for the Orange, and we are tied. He was shut out the other day against Hopkins in the semifinals. Crockett taking Felber to the rack in super slow-mo. He just gained some inside leverage. The check is there, but he dives across the crease, improving his angle. Crockett hit at three pipe shots in the quarterfinals against Georgetown. Could have had a big day. Didn't play that well on Saturday. But he likes his matchup against Felber. Three season All-American was named third team All-American today. Brian Crockett of Syracuse. The Petro long stick. One of his teammates down. It's Park. Park who is Park. shaken up against Georgetown in the quarterfinals. And again the other day against Hopkins. Great play from right. The bounce pass. As he got it to Ditzel. Unbelievable move to help break the Navy ride. Navy's ride is tenacious. They hustle. They make it difficult. They challenge every inch of the field. No clear comes easy against the mids. Second midfield line now in for the Orange. Steve Lacutus out there, but Powell handles now. Four points against Hopkins the other day. Spectacular Powell. Bounce shot from Nee goes wide. Brian Nee had himself four goals the other day against Hopkins in a resounding Syracuse win. Here's Powell again, creating Powell shooting. And it whistles just over the crossbar. Backed up by the Orange again. There's another look at the goalies. Matt Russell, beginning of the year, not even a starter. Jay Piper. Playoff success is really his hallmark. Brooks charging in. Shot from me. Stopped by Russell. Trying to track it down as Powell playing in his final collegiate game. Out of bounds, it goes to Syracuse. An amazing story with Matt Russell, folks, tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. He's got to board a flight at the Naval Academy flight at Jacksonville, Florida. Later that morning, he's got to be on a Naval cruiser for a six-week stint. Ramos scores for Syracuse. Matt Russell would like to start that six-week training session coming off a championship. But Rommel and the Orange have other ideas. Syracuse has so many weapons. It's Powell drawing the crowd. A seam opens up. And Greg Rommel, you talk about a student athlete. This was a guy who was accepted at Princeton University. Instead said, I'm going to stay home in Central New York. I want to play for the Orange. Bioengineering major. He's an all-academic selection, and I thought he shot the ball very well on Saturday. He's really feeling his confidence. Two goals Saturday against the Blue Jays. Pazanka wins possession. Here's Graham Gill with it. Bottom out a shot instead. Big E. Dingman shoots. It was blocked first. Regained by the mids. Gill charging, diving, and stopped by Jay Piper. Ball loose just outside the box. Scooped up Pazanka, the team's leader in ground balls. And amongst the nation's leaders in that category, what a year Chris Pazanka has had. He'll switch out now, 24 in the gold jersey as the mids bring on a little more skill. No shot clock in college across. They play four 15-minute quarters. Each team can play four long stick players. The defenders use the long stick. The attackmen and the midfielders use the short sticks. These two teams will play about 25 to 30 athletes Substitutions are on the fly or on dead balls. Matt Maduro, 35 in gold. He's also heading to his commission as soon as this tournament is over. Burns are trying to create team's leader and assists. Here's Bossy off of flight school as well. They'll have a temporary assignment before he heads to his assignment. Quick shot, quick goal. Taylor Harris, quick stick. In front of Piper, not much the orange that Miner can do. We are tied two apiece. This is Adam Real isolating top of the box. Watch him draw the double team. There's no fill by the orange defense. Real inside to Harris. Little catch and quick shoot. The emotion, the celebration. 
excellent to capitalize. That's the second midfield for the Naval Academy. Any production out of that unit is a huge plus. Danny Brennan takes the draw in the X for Syracuse. Pazanka. We talked to John Desco before the game today. Quinn had told us Pazanka is so good at waiting until the official triggers the draw before he makes his move. He can almost outweigh Brennan. And look what he's done so far. He's won three of five. Talk about a guy who's on fire. 12 of 13 in the quarterfinals, and then 15 of 19 on Saturday. He handles here, pass off for Graham Gill. What a dramatic moment, folks, it was Saturday. If you missed it on ESPN2 for Gill, 12 in a gold jersey against Princeton in the semifinals. Run one off the pipe. With about 30 seconds left, his team up by one. It went out of bounds. Princeton got the ball back. But in the end, Matt Russell stopped Trombino, the great freshman of Princeton, to clinch the win. Bailey. Marked closely by Jake Cork, a defensive midfielder, short stick for Syracuse. What a story this is for Dingman. Pass broken up. DiPietro ripping the stick right out of Bossy's hands, but he picks it up again and triggers play. Navy beating Syracuse to loose balls right now. And Bailey draws the first penalty of the game from the Syracuse launch stick. And a second foul. Go, and a two-man advantage is coming for the mid. The third penalty flag drops. We've got yellow laundry all over the field, and it's not going to end well at all for the Orange in this sequence. Dave, I think this is going to be a hold and then a push. The first foul, you'll see right here, holding occurs when a player impedes the movement of an opponent or an opponent's cross, and then the push with possession. You can't thrust or shove a player from behind, and that's what he did. Six on four right now. This is just like a hockey power play. Navy will put big Ian Dingman inside. The key guy on their extra man unit all year has been Joe Bossy. He's got nine extra man goals. It's one for one. You see Plunkett in, 32nd technical for his push. Two man advantage. Now six on four for the mids. They're one for one with a man up. Barely tallying early. Here's Berger. Bad pass. Left field. Gill catches up with it before it pops out of bounds. Good break for the mids. On AstroTurf, that ball rolls out of bounds. On the field turf, that's where we're playing. They try a quick stick for Dingman. And Horn tracks it down. In the field of play. We talked about the good numbers. On the man up is Bergner. Bailey some time. Whistles it wide. Laser beam. Right-handed shot by Ben Bailey. Teams back to even strength. Excellent job by the Syracuse close defense. They were packing it in a four-man zone. Used the zone defense so effectively against Hopkins. They catch them all. The coach saying afterwards, we didn't adjust to their slides well, didn't move well. We're pretty sure Navy will make the proper adjustment. It was a masterful sleight of hand by John Desco, who had been working on his own defense for weeks, but never showed it. And so Hopkins was unprepared. Biggie and Dingman, what a story, folks, from Carthage, New York, same hometown of Mike Powell. Tries to create in front, and he's stuck. Ball loose, Bossy trying to get across on it. Same for Gill. Round ball, far side. Picked up by the Orange again. Nice play defensively. Andrew Sullivan, defensive midfielder off for Jared Park. The two sports stars here. He's a former Big East Rookie of the Year on the soccer field for the Orange. Shots on goal, basically even. But that last scenario, that was an excellent escape by Syracuse. Down two men. Navy fed the crease twice. They didn't handle the ball sharply. They looked a little nervous. Never really got a good quality shot. It was Bailey from about 10 yards. Got for Crockett. Now it's Powell. The spectacular Tawarton Award finalist for the best player in the nation. They shoot, they pass. To feed this time. Doherty. Look the ball around for Lindsay. Oh, that left hand shot. Powell, look at this ball movement by Syracuse. Backed up nicely by Zink of the Orange. As a shot wide from Mike Powell. We saw the face paint. Tells us before the game, you've got to look good to play well. That's why I get a big face paint going. I started back at Carthage, New York in high school. I thought the most impressive aspect of Powell on Saturday in the semifinals and all year, year long, he's playing within the confines of Syracuse's team offense. He's pressing the goal, drawing the double or triple team, and then spreading the wealth. Saw Mike before the game. On the field, he said, field turf, the artificial turf, handling the rain well for his cuts. Look at him move his feet, folks. That's what he does so well. Quick six, sink, scores! Alex 
right sink. And the Orange regains the lead, 3-2, another assist from Powell. Second helper of the game for the spectacular Mike Powell. Off the restart on the sideline, watch the footwork of Mike Powell. Boom, right there, the quickness creates some separation. Navy's got to respect him in terms of his ability to get to the goal. Zink, the big frame inside. His brother's a first-team All-American defender at Maryland. They're twins. There is Alex Zink. The helper from Powell, 30 assists now in his NCAA tournament career. That is number one in Syracuse history in helpers. He has 53 career NCAA points. Gary Gates still has the lead in that category. 50 goals were scored in NCAA tournament play by the great Gary Gate, who wore 22 at Syracuse as well. And we will illustrate the incredible tradition of number 22 in Orange history. Gates wins. Gary and Paul racked up three straight championships. Third member of our crew. Uh, face and voice very familiar to this championship is Lee Felsmo. Hey, fellas, mark it on your VCRs, 2-2, and they didn't get the extra man goal. It went the other way. Syracuse scored a two-goal swing, but John Tillman controls the offense for Navy. He said they've got to move the ball more on the outside because Syracuse is sucking it in and playing soft. Look for more ball movement from the offense of Navy. You'll see if that works out, Leaf, on that play, warding off call against Dingman. Folks, he's 6'3", almost 250 pounds. Absolute bulldozer out there. He can run over people, sometimes get too aggressive. And he pads up also. I mean, this is a kid who wears the biggest shoulder pads, arm pads, and rib guards he can find. He's a cyborg. Look at Piper trying to get a little too cute turnover. Looking to hit to Petro, the Johns Hopkins transfer, who exacted a bit of revenge against his former teammate Saturday in the national semifinal. A great moment for him, but there he cannot come up with a loose ball. Tell you, you try to be nifty and crafty in your own zone, and you're going to get burnt. He puts this on the carpet, and DePetro was already out of that clearing box. You see that white line. Great hustle by the Naval Academy. There's Bozner on the ride defense, causing a turnover. Billy Looney, one of the three Looney brothers on this team. Gill trying to work down low. Bailey was open for a moment. Syracuse broke it up, though. And the orange comes out. Sullivan, right hand cradle. The lost the ball. Gill was there with a nice poke yet. New game by Syracuse. Defensive middies will sprint off the field for the orange. They'll get the high skill midfielders back out there as soon as they can. taking a little break right now. Syracuse typically plays four attack when they bring in Zink. Knee will rotate out. Crockett, they'll share some time. The emotions of a championship game, these guys, these teams have to go a little deeper on their bench. The long pass, Dory some room. Why? Just missed the target. Labeled for the top left over the crossbar. Dory said after the game Saturday against Hopkins, the five goals, even he was surprised at his career best output. Talk about shooting accuracy, Valone, Lindsay, and Doherty, all big targets. He can absolutely let the ball rip from about 12 yards. Lindsay shot high over the crossbar, backed up by the orange again. Unusual to see Mike Powell sit, but I don't think we saw him the two games Georgetown and Hopkins sit down even for one sequence. No, but they're giving him a breather here early, which makes sense. Me for Dari, the transfer from Hofstra. Tries to hit Zink, he scored one already in his first quarter. Fell for all over him. Ray gets physical. Morris across on it for the mids. In the corner, what a save. Crockett, but he stepped in the line. And Navy will get it back on the turnover. Great hustle by the Naval Academy's Bucky Morris. This kid's been battling a broken thumb, a dislocated shoulder. There he is, one of the senior captains. He's a playmaker in the midfield, plays that long pole position up and down the field. He is very, very talented with the ball on the stick. Mike Felber, close defense with a long stick from Rochester, New York area, Penfield and the Quaid Jesuit School. In between Syracuse and Buffalo and the heart of New York State. So many great players from that area and from here in Baltimore. Steve Looney on the move.
this play, brother to brother. It's the freshman. Billy Looney catches this left-handed. This was not a fast shot, but it takes a strange hop. You see the goalie, Jay Piper, go down. The freshman, Billy Looney, bright future ahead. I tell you, this kid is quite an athlete, a great high school football player. That play started with Mitch Hendler, the defender, carrying into the zone, and that's where Navy's dangerous. A lot of teams will pull up there, Dave, but they continue to attack. Kazanka so physical off the draw. The wings trying to get in for Syracuse. Panarelli got involved there, got it to me, and now Powell back on the field for the Orange. There he is, a right hand cradle. And the great Mike Powell has two assists already. Big the news this week from him. Will he play pro lacrosse right away? With the Baltimore Bayhawks of Major League Lacrosse, they have the first overall selection. They've said they're going to draft Mike Powell. He says he wants to play music, he wants to write songs and play his guitar. What I think he really wants is to play for the Rochester Rattlers alongside his brother, Casey and Ryan. Ryan is here as a team's volunteer assistant coach. Here's Rommel, bounce shot. Backed up though, Crockett. And Syracuse has it. The incredible story of the Pals continues. In the history of college lacrosse, there's only been three other players to be First team All-Americans four times. Jack Turnbull in the 1930s for Hopkins, Frank Urso, the great midfielder for Maryland, and Del Dressel, the midfielder for Johns Hopkins in the 1980s. Mike Powell is a four-time first teamer. Stephen Brooks trying to keep the ball alive for Powell, Quint and the Orange. Brooks, ground ball, made a great play from the midfield. Now knee unsettled, and the Orange try to take advantage. Then they'll set things up for the great Mike Powell. Go back in his man. We saw the other day the dips to his shot. Over the back, hit a pipe. Try a one-timer. Comes the buck two. Scores! Brad buck two from the Onondaga Nation. Iroquois Confederacy just south of the city of Syracuse. Second goal in two games for buck two. It starts again with Mike Powell. This ball will get deflected. And buck two catches keep your eye on Russell the goaltender that hit him in his left thigh and kicked up that'll leave a mark I tell you that's demoralizing as a keeper when you get good meat on it and it trickles up there's Matt Russell slow start in the semifinals in the first half against Princeton but he was the difference in the second half these Syracuse shooters though they're head and shoulders better than the Princeton shooters Orange on the move again seven different goal scorers folks so far Powell got a feed 15 yards in front, intercepted by the mids. How about the tempo of this game? Here comes Looney. Steve and Billy. Combining on a beautiful tally for Navy, tying it at that point at 3-3. Keep in mind that Richie Mead says, we are not a fast break team. We are like Dean Smith, North Carolina basketball. I think the reason both these teams are here are because they can play slow down, and they can also play speed it up transition lacrosse. And that is transition where it's there, and that's a goal from Graham Gill. On a quick stick, Gill had two of the other day against Princeton with just seconds left in the first quarter, ties our championship game at four. From the end zone, John Bursner. The little water bug behind the net, showing his quickness, draws the double team. Decent defense on Gill. I don't know how he got that shot off. Talk about a great story, Graham Gill. Did not even play varsity lacrosse. His high school in New Jersey did not have a varsity lacrosse team. He played club, was known as a soccer player. But guess who his uncle is? Dom Starzia, the head coach of the University of Virginia lacrosse team, called Richie Mead, say, hey, my nephew, he can play. You should take a look at him. And here's Graham Gill. He's on fire. Kazanka does it again. Horn sound for the end of the first quarter from MNC Bank Stadium in Baltimore. The dramatic scene is set. Navy, Syracuse, a national championship on the line. 15 complete, all tied for a piece. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NCAA Men's Division I Lacrosse Championships. Brought to you by Pontiac. Official performance machines of the NCAA. And Coca-Cola. Let's make it real. Fifth time in the last six years, Syracuse has been in the national title game. 
as they bid for their third national championship of this decade. Folks, Mike Powell has a 38-inch vertical leap. He can dunk. He's 5'9". Quint, incredible athlete. Dynamic quickness, a flair for the dramatic. His stop-and-go ability is absurd. He plays in hyperspeed. He's a fearless flyer around the crease. Mike Powell, a true lacrosse hero with legions of fans. Take a look at the stats. Syracuse dominating the shots. Pazanka keeping Navy in this ball game by winning six of the nine faceoffs. Possession times very, very even. I think Powell really has been the difference for Syracuse offensively with those two assists. His ability to set up the sniper shooters that they have. Pazanka is trying to take over the all-time Navy lead and faceoffs one today. He's certainly on the way to that. Navy in the goal. Home unis. Pazanka gets the pass. Bossy charges in. Score! Joe Bossy, the skinny Atlas New York native, 20 minutes from Syracuse, that's where he's from, scores for Navy. Tran transition offense off of the faceoff, Pazanka rakes it out, and the guy I love so much is Steve Looney, little number eight, the quickness on the faceoff, scoops up the loose ball, and the Naval Academy pushes it, Looney to Pazanka, and the lefty, Bossy, down low. Tell you, Navy does not have a yellow light offense there. It's green light. Go, 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 and they capitalize. 43rd goal for Bossy, team's leader in tallies. Big battle. Morris comes away with it. Looney. And the man's on the move again. It's unsettled for Syracuse. Steve Looney, a spin move. He's still with it. Looney shoots. Bounces wide, backed up by Bossy and by Ben Horn, and Navy keeps it. Joe Bossy just now a couple goals away from Mike Hannon, 1978-45 tally, second all-time in Navy history. Extraordinary year continues for him. He's got those smooth hands, a great high school hockey player. Very composed in front of the net, excellent stick face. And his shot, the velocity really comes from his wrist, very accurate, from in touch. And Eddie from Tully, New York, another very close to Syracuse product. Withholding the ball from play. Call goes against Navy. And the Orange will try to beat the Meep Ride again. This is where those, those long cross-field lollipop pass is so critical. Where the defenseman with a long stick to be able to handle the ball well, they do here for Syracuse. And the Orange clear it downfield. Top midfield out there for Syracuse. Doherty jogs out of the field. Lindsay and Ballone. Sean Lindsay had the game winner. Five seconds left against Georgetown. And scores here. Lindsay for the Orange. The equalizer. We're deadlocked at five. He's the reason Syracuse got to the national semis with a dramatic win over Georgetown at Cornell last weekend. Lindsay pressing in left hand. And look at the upper body strength. He just leans in, leans in, creates enough angle, and then nails the far upper corner. I tell you right now, whichever goalie settles down and starts focusing on the ball, I think that team is probably going to be the winner. Take a look at the saves. Syracuse right now, Jay Pfeiffer only two saves. Matt Russell for Navy has only made one save. So I think when you're dealing with great shooters like Sean Lindsay, whichever goalie settles in and relaxes and just plays their game and sees the ball, that team has got a great chance. Panarelli, the freshman and All-American high school performer, one of the most coveted High school recruits in the nation last year from Long Island helps win the ground ball and face off for the Orange. Lindsay, who scored a moment ago, said after Saturday's win, the biggest victory he's ever been a part of. That includes national championship wins for Syracuse, upsetting the top seed, top ranked Blue Jays of Hopkins. So, a question I asked John Desco today on the field before the game Will your team have focus? Will it be a letdown against Navy, a team that hasn't been here since 75? He said, No way. We'll be ready. So far, they have been. Lindsay right hand, great old slide for Navy, leaves someone open. Darning, shot for Nee, scores! Brian Nee, and four Saturday against Hopkins. Tallies again for the Orange. Talk about precision passing. Darby, skip pass, slices the defense, and then the fadeaway jump shot by knee, nailing the inside post. 
jumps away from the cage, but he's got the strength, gets that great body rotation. And there is Knee, who played locally here in Baltimore. Change in the X for Syracuse on the draw. Jeff Keough saw a lot of the time there, replaces Danny Brennan, the freshman from Long Island. Now we see so many different players being involved in goal scoring. New man in the X for Syracuse doesn't work out well. Here's Steve Looney charging for the mids. Face-off numbers strongly in favor of Pazanka and maybe again, who has been incredible, second best in the nation coming in. Face-offs won. We're glad to see Brian Nee even competing in this national semifinal weekend. Last weekend, folks, did he ever take a hit against Georgetown? He got Not caught left. He got caught right under the chin with a cross check. Mike Tyson used to talk about the two knockout zones being the temple and the button on the chin. And Lee took a perfect shot right on the chin. No foul was called. It was really a horrendous, horrendous sight. It was Mike White of Georgetown. This is Bossy. And Joe bounces it just wide. Left hand shot. Major League Baseball Memorial Day continues three more games on ESPN2. Astros, Cubs here on ESPN. Cards and Bucks and the Giants and D-backs as well. Late game on ESPN2. For more, log on ESPN.com. Lots of big league baseball. We have fresh open coverage. We've got Women's College World Series final tonight. Cal, UCLA. Great championship day on the family of networks. Syracuse playing zone defense for the first time this afternoon. What a key that was on Saturday against Hopkins. Really had them wondering. That's played by Bailey. Here's Bossy some room. Reflected. Navy setting up in their 1 4 1 set. Bossy with a terrific wing shot. Had a goal Saturday against Princeton. See one the tally victory over the Tigers. Pingman on the doorstep looking there for Bossy. That's a pass, not a back play you can make there behind the cage, and Syracuse takes it back. Excellent zone defense by Syracuse. Round one, when they throw the zone out, very effective. They said back down to Lee Felsmo, more than zone defense. David Quinn, they call it the orange defense, and they're really sagging it in, testing the outside shooting of Navy. Navy knows this. They know that they'll get more pressure from the outside. So far, inside defense is working. Back upstairs. Want to hit Lee from... Brendan Looney on the far side, but on the ground ball, an unsettled situation. Syracuse takes it back thanks to Powell and the great hands. How about the speed of Mike Powell, the intuition? Crock at some room, trying to create from behind the cage. Here's Knee. Scored just moments ago. Knee, sharp angle, scores again. Ryan Knee for Cuse. The senior has his second, and finally, we have someone scoring two goals. Offensive lacrosse is very similar to offensive basketball, except in lacrosse, you can attack from behind the net. Knee hangs up Basanko, turns the corner, and in super mode, just sneaks this right inside of Matt Russell's cross. Two in a row for Knee, he's our only multiple goal scorer. Brennan back in the X for Syracuse as the rain really comes down now. Artificial surface. Walked on the field before the game and seemed to handle it well at that point, but it was more of a mist than a hard rain then. Ball loose for the long stick. Who's got it? Powell trying to rake it free of trouble. And the mids finally come out. Felder. Great pass, Morris. Chance, if he gets to the middle of the field, has Harris wide open. Morris still has it, though. Feeding Dingman. Piper, a piece of it. Made a great save, Jay Piper. Piper. The nation's best attack, Minnie and Dingman. Digging it out. Mike Powell, again, with another key loose ball. That's two in the last two minutes. Getting to loose balls, we know, Quint, critical. This is with a quickness. Of Mike Powell comes in. Folks, he goes through five different pair of shoes, different spike levels before each game. He says to us, very picky about my shoe selection to make sure my cutting stop and go is on the money. Looks like he picked the right ones because he's moving well out there. Lindsay left hand cradle. Nation Syracuse offense belong. Lindsay, Darty, 
Russell made a great save. No one else can go in that crease but Matt Russell. Paolo almost picked off that rebound. That's how quick he is. Anticipated that and flashed in front of the net. And there with a long stick. They talked to Mitch yesterday about defending Mike Powell. And he said, I'll be ready for him. What I'm going to do is watch his hips. Don't watch his eyes. Don't watch the ball. Because you can't go anywhere without your hips. It's going to be fundamental defense for basketball. It's really the same thing, except you have a long stick, which is your cushion. Handler's focus is to sit down, almost like you're in a chair, and get real low, like a defensive cornerback covering a wide receiver. Drop step, drop step, shuffle your feet, and occasionally throw a poke, a rap, or a slap to keep Powell off balance. Matadora starts to wind around the cage. out there too. Clifton, Virginia. James Robinson secondary score. Second midfield line out there for the Mints. The first attack at Ian Dingman. Two brothers in the service. Quick shot from Dingman. That whistles over the cage. Did Syracuse back it up? Yes, they did. Great hustle to Petro. And he's smarting a bit. He's going to have to be replaced. They might have Caught an edge there on that lunge. The field conditions are very important, Lee Felsmo. Well, fellas, last year at this time in the rain, we were knee deep almost in mud. The mud was literally five inches thick. Since then, Sports Tech's momentum. It's two and a half, two to two and a half inch blades of polyethylene plastic. And this stuff really holds up well. Rubber is embedded in there with silica, and it really holds up well, almost better when it's wet. And of course, it's a much different surface and more favorable for guys like Michael Powell, as Quince talked about in this year's championship. Dave, I thought he was compromised last year in the mud. He really couldn't showcase his skills. Every time he planted with his great quickness, he'd lose his edge. Sport X surface. That's what we've got here at MT Bank Stadium. Oh, great play. Then a penalty flag. Felber get the slow whistle call against Syracuse forthcoming. Way gets physical. Orange would like to see the ball hit the ground, so the second penalty foul. can be called. Another penalty's coming. Zink may have drawn a second, though, on the way out. And maybe may have two men up here in the second quarter. Felber with the, the pickoff, and boom, right there, the slash by Crockett gets him in the top of the helmet. Slashing occurs when a player's stick viciously makes contact, and the second one is probably a push from behind. Look at the physical play. Lacrosse combining so many different skills. You got the stick skills, high scoring, hard hitting like football. Malone will sit for the orange. A one minute advantage. Two men up. Six on four. So far the man hits. Getting 500 with their man up opportunities. What a chance to pull to within one. Dingman, we mentioned the two brothers, Lee and Chris, who are in the military now. One in the Army, one in the Marine Corps, Quantico. On the end line, John Wright, good effort, but it does bounce over the line, so Navy gets it back here. Still 34 ticks left. And their man up, Mitts have not had a goal in the last eight minutes. Watch the hustle. It's a great play by Vidash. And then Wright can't handle. One of the penalties is released, so now it's a six on five. Solomon hustles back to the play. Dingman clicks it. Finally a goal for the big attackman from Navy. You just know his brother Lee from Fort Bang, Georgia in the Army. His brother Chris, a former great lacrosse player at Navy, Aquatico and Marine, here in person today. Love seeing this on Memorial Day. Bersner with the look away, his second assist. The extra man clicks. Look away, just freezes the defense, and Dingman, what a target. He's like Shaquille O'Neal in there. 6'4", 248 pounds. Size aside, Coach Mead says, hey, if he was 5'10 and 180, he'd still be a great lacrosse player. Keogh wins the draw big time for Syracuse. Powell tries to take advantage of the unsettled situation for the mids and rips it wide. 
Dingman is the leading scorer for Navy, showing us why. So Keo getting some time in the X along with Ren for the Orange today. Keo 53% for the season. But a lot of times facing off comes down to styles, and he's matching up better with Pizanko. Powell, sharp angle shot, tries to beat Matt Russell. If the Mids can win the championship, Matt Russell's celebration, folks, is going to be brief. It has to be. 4 a.m. departure for Jacksonville and a six-week assignment aboard a Navy cruiser. I mean, that's cutting it close. How about Ben Bailey? Thursday, he's got to be down in Pensacola, Florida. It's a one-day vacation, basically. Puts a lot of things in perspective. Malone trying to split the double team, broken up by Clipper Lennon. And the mids march out the other way. Felber with a long stick for Harris. Within 18 months, Ben Bailey could be deployed to war zones internationally. He could be going to Iraq. It takes about a year and a half to get wing. Get your wings and complete that part of flight school. About a 10-year commitment all set for those who opt for the Navy flight training program. England thought about a feed. Asked about the big spotlight that is championship weekend, Richie Mead said, Hey, my guys are immune to pressure. They jump out of planes at 3 a.m. in the morning. They're going to be in charge of $50 million aircraft. This is this is the fun part. The process is the elective at the Naval Academy. And as for facing the water today, so hey, we're from the Navy. We love water. <laughs> Good answer, coach. Four and a half and counting second quarter. Thrilling championship game from Baltimore. Looney, right hand cradle. Neil has been so spectacular. Former soccer star in high school. Or is there an artist behind that cage? Dingman trying to get a pick. Dingman in front. Bounce shot. Save made Piper. Rebound loose sent just wide. Bersner. And great hustle. Syracuse backs it up beautifully. Closest to it when still in bounds, 15 in the orange, made an incredible play. The 40,000 officials here who are rooting for Navy did not agree with that call. Pfeiffer made the kick save from in tight, the lefty, splendid reflexes. Time out of the field, 4.04 to go. First half, one goal game, Cusa lead. Thank you. Here in Baltimore, Ben Bailey, who's getting set, as we've talked about, for it could be up to a 10-year stint, maybe more, in the Navy, flight school. Just a long day, Friday, but uh, once graduation was over, it was kind of a big relief. And uh, But after that, we had a you know, police escort here and then practice and then go to the banquet. And I woke up the next morning just feeling a little bit more refreshed, thinking, what's this officer uniform doing in my room? But, uh, you know, it's, it's a good feeling now. Van Balen describing graduation day. Well, that's how it started, about half an hour from where we are here. And he told us yesterday, Quint, we had to get up one day during the week at 4, one day during the week at 5 to practice an outdoor ceremony and one for the indoor ceremony in case we had some rain. Busy day, and he said, hey, when I hit the rack at about 7.30, I was out cold. We talk about adrenaline. These Naval Academy seniors have been living on it this week. It's a dream come true to compete for this ultimate championship. Simultaneously, you're graduating from the Naval Academy. Folks, it's absolutely pouring out here right now. Rain really driving on the field for Goodsell. Long stick for Syracuse. Orange trying to defeat the Navy Ryan. Orange looking for a timeout. Desco's looking for a timeout. We're pleading with the official. Yeah. And the official couldn't hear him. Richie Mead has never been part of an NCAA title game as a coach. Got to a semifinal as an assistant in North Carolina. Syracuse is all about winning championships. This is how it should be. No more traffic jams, no more slow people. Just real power and the freedom to let it loose. The new Pontiac GTO 
GXP, and Grand Prix Comp G. Two V8s and a supercharged V6 that acts like one. That's fuel for the soul. It's a do or die game six. The Eastern Conference Finals are ESPN. The Pacers face a must win while the Pistons look to move on to the NBA Finals. Coverage begins tomorrow at 7.30, only on ESPN. Championship Monday on ESPN. First lacrosse national championship. Syracuse lead on Navy in the second quarter. Tonight, coverage of the NCAA Women's College World Series continues. Eight Eastern. Yes, a primetime live game. First time ever from Oklahoma City. The second seed UCLA takes on number five Cal. It's a rematch of last year's title game. Won by the Bruins and Sue Enquist, their head coach. Diane Ninemeyer and Cal try to take it. Kira Gale, a nine inning no hitter last year to lead UCLA to a one nothing win in the championship game. She'll be in the circle again for the Bruins tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern time here on ESPN. UCLA has won 10 softball national titles. The rain torrential. The heavens have opened for the moment here in Baltimore. They are playing on an artificial surface. Footing should hold up well here as Lakutis handles for Syracuse. Rommel, Mike Lakuta, Syracuse area native. Lakutis' first NCAA tournament point came the other day against Hopkins. He won a state championship over West Genesee High School. Camillus, New York, that great program had by Mike Messier. Quick shot, and Powell is stopped by Russell. Only his third save of the game, and it was an easy one. Yet another Central New York product with a right-hand cradle for Navy. And he has left the shadows of the carrier to hold the play for the mids. Slow substitution by the orange right there. Navy had numbers, but they couldn't capitalize. You know, most teams, when they clear Dave from defense to offense, they sub immediately. But Navy kind of pushes down to the offensive zone with all six players, almost like an old-school approach where midfielders play both defense and offense. Here's the ending, man. Up a few blocks from the Powell home in Carthage, New York. A high school teammate of Mike Powell. Now they're head to head, bidding for a national championship. What a storyline. The big fella double team. Bossick, a fake, a shot. Piper, rebound scooped by Gill, just wide. Graham, Gill, quick stick, rebound, missed the target. Tell you, with Dingman and Powell, you know, up in Carthage at Keddie's, the town bar. They're drinking Jenny Lights. They're on the edge of their bar stools. Who are they rooting for, Dave? They've got to watch all the Carthage boys closely, that's for sure. Did so. As Bergner lost his stick. Bodies flying everywhere. Yard sale with equipment. Ten-second violation. That's a titanium shaft, folks. They build those planes that these Naval Academy grads will be flying with titanium. Talk about strength. The official makes that call. Once your stick breaks, you have to put it down on the ground. It's a really a hazard. It's a danger. Now the equipment staff will unscrew the plastic head from that shaft. Bailey being marked closely. Triple team by the orange. Rapicho checked him hard from behind. But ground ball comes away with Bossy. Ball against Navy. Interference. quick change going on on the sideline that that black and decker power tool take the screw out you have extra equipment on the sideline and this is where the equipment manager is really tested most of these players will come into this game with two or three sticks but they really prefer to use their game stick rama lost it for syracuse along the near side nice pressure on the right defense from gill and john desco's team turns it over just over a minute to go in this first half. Both teams with one timeout remaining. Richie Meade doesn't like what he sees here. Don't be surprised if Navy calls a timeout. Adam Real figures play for the midshipman. Bossy for Ben Horn. Ian Dingman says he grew up watching the Powell's Ryan and Casey was so impressed, he said as a youngster, 
When the Pals came off the field, they were totally spent. They used 100% of their energy in the game. So he's tried to do the same thing himself. Battles, a pass, and a horn, a quick stick tally. Who makes Ben Horn? Ties it at seven. A sixth tie of this first half. From the upper angle, keep your eye right there. That's Ben Horn. He's parked on the backside, but it's all about Ian Dingman. Watch him press to the net, leaning in, drawing the double team. Kicking it to the horn on the backside. Ben Horn from St. Ignatius High School in San Francisco. Played California lacrosse, going by leaps and bounds. Right now, 117 varsity programs. One of them in San Diego, Tory Pines, beat a team from Long Island this year. They beat Garden City. Lacrosse, coast to coast in California. Danola, at one time, was the goalie for the mids. Now operates off the wing on the face-off X. Seth makes a big play, but maybe trying not to throw it away will not be successful. Need good hustle on Russell. Got a piece of the pass as Russell tried to go cross field with it. Navy's going to call timeout. That's a bad turnover. Bad turnover for, for Navy in their own zone. And Russell's stick broke also. This is Powell's shot about two or three minutes ago. Left-handed. And you can see the focus. And now Matt Russell's having his stick fixed. There he is, the sophomore. I tell you, the Naval Academy has a sensational goalie coach, Ray Finnegan. Played for the Naval Academy in 1975. That's the last time Navy was in the national title game. First team All-American for Matt Russell this year. Trying to get the cross off one of the sticks, get it on the right stick in time. This is quick repair, folks, on the Navy sideline. Power screwdriver will take care of it, huh, Quinn? Black and Decker headquarters right here in Towson, Maryland. That comes in handy. And Russell's fixed. Just a reminder, you get the latest in all the NCAA championships. Log on, ncasports.com, score stats and more. On your home for everything, NCAA, ncasports.com. That can be awful stressful for a goalie or any player when your equipment breaks down. You're over there, you're thinking about everything except the game. Russell grew up in Connecticut, a hockey player. He was a winger until the fourth grade. That's when he first started playing lacrosse. Fell in love with the sport, never went back to hockey. He became a goalie. He wants to be a Navy SEAL, folks. That's where he's headed. Down the road when he's commissioned as an ensign. Final moments here for Syracuse at a half. Pass gets away. Uh, five seconds left. Last gasp effort here as Mike Powell and Syracuse are trying to shut down Navy's final bid of the opening 30 minutes. I expect Gill to send this towards the goal. You think Navy would crash the goal to try to screen, try for the deflection. Ten and a half minutes, Syracuse scoreless. Five seconds, so you got to shoot it right away. Syracuse to call timeout. John Desco, understated head coach of Syracuse. Says at times he's even embarrassed to talk about himself. A native of Camillus, New York. He went through that legendary West Genesee program. An All-American at Syracuse himself. And a longtime assistant for Roy Simmons Jr. Before taking over six years ago. Now bids for his third national title. Coverage of the Stanley Cup Finals presented by Nextel. Continues tonight. Game three the other night. The key story this year has been the Naval Academy, ranked number two for most of the season. They won more games than any team in Naval Academy history. A proud program with 17 national champions. They beat Maryland, who at the time was ranked number one. The defense, best in the NCAA's. Terrific scoring margin as well for this Naval Academy team. Puts me talked about their transformation in the fall when they did marine landing training. It's really improved their endurance. Gill, a few seconds left. Does he have time? No. Would not have counted. Waved off by the official. Save made anyway by the junior Jay Piper from Towson, Maryland. Just moments away from where we are in Baltimore. 
30 minutes, folks, not nearly enough to decide the 2004 lacrosse national champion. All tied at seven, Natalie Felsmo. Fellows, I'm drenched down here just like Coach Mead. Uh, they threatened to go out on a little bit of a run, two goals lead, maybe two or three times, but Richie, you've answered them every time. Our guys are hanging in there. I'd like us to play better defensively. They're, uh, they're very good on offense. I think we're not as disciplined sliding as we need to be. We're not communicating, but they're awful good. I think if we can get possession, we can score, but they're very good offensively. We're going to have to just uh, calm our guys down a little bit. Every time we've made a mistake, they've scored, and they've scored a couple of times because they've got good talent. This crowd is going nuts for Navy. That has to feel great. Feels great, but we got to play better to win. Good luck second half. Guys. The legend of 22 continues for the Orange. Crockett and the Orangemen so far have been effective offensively against Russell and Navy. All time. Now to the studio, Dave Revson and Kevin Cord. Okay, Dave, thank you very much. So a 7-7 game at the half. It is all deadlock. I'm here with Kevin Corgan, head coach of Notre Dame, led the Fighting Irish to the Final Four in 2001. And so far, Kevin, what do you think of the first half? Absolutely terrific first half. Uh, both teams playing well. Navy's tenacity on ground balls and the riding game, a play in the full field game they want to play is uh, right on top of their game. At the same time, the execution of Syracuse has just been phenomenal. Their offense, great players making great plays, and, and their, their half field execution has been great. So you, you've really got both teams doing what they do well, and, and I think it's just been a terrific first half. Both teams playing well. We're seeing Syracuse right here. Uh, what are you pointing out here for Navy? Well, I, I think Navy's, they've been so tenacious. They've been getting the ground balls, getting it up, and pushing it here. You see them playing the full field game that they love to play and are so effective and, and cashing in. So a 7-7 game so far, Kevin. And you talked at halftime of the Syracuse Johns Hopkins game on Saturday, and you said, you know what, Hopkins better look out because Syracuse is a great second-half team. And, in fact, they went out and played well in the second half and ended up winning that game going away. Do you see a similar story here? Well, they still got all those experienced seniors on the, on the field, and, and they're going to play a, a good second half. You know that. But I think what's interesting today is the pressure may turn to them in the fourth quarter if Navy can keep it close. Syracuse is kind of supposed to win in this situation. And so I think it may work to Navy's advantage if they can hang in there and, and get to the fourth quarter. Well, Navy trying to become the first service academy to win an NCAA championship since the Naval Academy did it in soccer in 1964, so it has been a long time, and we are a half hour away from finding out whether they can repeat. Still to come, a poignant story on this Memorial Day as we update you on a former lacrosse star who sacrificed for our country. Nineteen eighty three, eighty eight through ninety, ninety three, ninety five, two thousand, two thousand two, all the Syracuse national titles. Navy has never won one. And the coach, John Desco, win another championship. He's joined now in the field by Arlie Felsmo. here in Baltimore. Crockett leaning in, ties it for Syracuse at one. And then Adam Reel to Taylor Harris. We're tied at two apiece. Is this Mike Powell's final game? We'll find out. Graham Gill for the Naval Academy makes it four to four. And then Brian Knee, the lefty, two straight goals back to back. Syracuse extends their lead. They take a two goal lead. But the Naval Academy, as they've shown all year, they fight back. Bursner to Dingman on the extra man. And then Dingman returns the favor, this time to Ben Horn. We're tied up at seven. Went numbers through 30 minutes of play. Face-offs huge. How about ground balls for Navy? Chris Mazanka so brilliant. And a face-off X helping that 10 ground ball advantage. Yeah, and in that second quarter, Navy out ground balled Syracuse 16 to 7. I really think the major differential, the key is going to be Matt Russell. Three saves, seven goals against. This kid's a first-team All-American. If Navy's going to win, Russell's got to turn it on. And the intangibles, maybe Syracuse has won all those titles. A lot of players on the field for the Orange have won a championship. Navy never has. Is that an advantage? Well, I think you're talking intangibles. Navy 
there's no team in America in any sport that has better intangibles than this Naval Academy team. So the mids and Take the orange look. all tied up. Our Navy Home Depot the coaching man. clinic on the extra man. Keep your eyes on Ian Dingman inside. He's the X. He's the big aircraft carrier. Shaquille O'Neal inside. Now, Syracuse releases one of the penalties. They've got five on defense, but there's some miscommunication. Two players could potentially cover Ian Dingman. You've got to get to his stick side. Quick feed in front. Bersner to Dingman, the ball's in the back of the net. Just poor communication defensively by Syracuse. And what a target Ian Dingman is. Danny Brennan back in the exit freshman for Syracuse against Pazanka. Navy was so brilliant in that category in the first half. Brennan said after Saturday's game, I've never played in front of 40,000. Never been so nervous. And Jared Park picks up for the orange. Soccer star at Christian Brothers Academy in Syracuse as a high school athlete. And here on the lacrosse field, national championship game, our second half underway from M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. Beautiful day now, thankfully. The rain, mist, fog is all passed. The skies have opened up. This will be much better for the players and fans. That first half was as exciting a first half as we've seen all season. Transition back and forth, terrific defense, high scoring, hard hitting. These players just going at one another. Teams did not meet in the regular season. Did have a scrimmage in February. Mike Powell didn't play in that because he was at a wedding. Matt Russell was the backup for that scrimmage. Bounce shot from Lindsay. Backed up by Doherty of Syracuse. Orange get it back. Say the senior midfielder for Syracuse. They really delivered in the semifinals. Seven goals from Lindsay Vallone and of course Kevin Dock Darty with five. Powell creating. Alone some room wide has been shut. Off the target. Steve Alone, who last year missed the NCAA tournament, 20 in the orange jersey, broke his jaw against Georgetown. Got a stick to the chops. Was spitting blood, said it was so painful for almost a month he couldn't open his mouth. Opening the scoring in the second half is Powell. Dive shot. That was a dive shot. Was he in the crease is the question. To dive. No goal. They took the dive out of lacrosse. The tough decision here for the referees is, was Michael Powell pushed into the crease or did he dive? They're showing it up on the smart vision screens to the dismay of the Syracuse Orange fans. We hope to show you that in a second. So the play made popular by the Gates, Airgate. In the late 80s, when they won their three titles in a row for Syracuse, rules have changed a bit. I love the dive shot. They took the dive out of lacrosse because they said it's dangerous for the goaltenders. Well, I can't point to one single goaltender who was ever hurt on a dive shot. Doug Knight, University of Virginia in the late 1990s, really patented that move. It was such an exciting play in lacrosse. And you can see Mike Powell's vertical leap as you talked about. All in 38 inches. He wore number 11 as a basketball star at Carthage High School after his favorite hooper, Bobby Hurley of Duke. And actually asked Jim Beheim, the Syracuse basketball coach, if he could play hoops in addition to lacrosse. Coach Desco, a lax coach at SU, said, ah, eh, let's stick to lacrosse. Oh, a little helicopter check. Lindsay. Gill regains. Panarelli, the great freshman defenseman, watching him. Gill, shovel pass for Steve Louie. Billy Louie lost the handle. Dingman tried to step on the his sway on that sideline, but he steps out of bounds. And the orange gets it back. He disagrees. Watch his right foot. He's not on the line there. Ooh, that's awful tight. That is a tough call. The referee's right there. And there's the padded up Ian Dingman. Richie Mead wearing the hat today. Com Desram 18. That's Commander Destroyer Squadron 18. Six ships in Norfolk, Virginia. Nick Lockwood, midfielder. Naval Academy class of 2001 sent him that hat. He's a surface warfare officer. Got back from Iraq in June, and Richie Mead wears a different hat. Sometimes he'll mix it up, but the influence of the ex-Naval Academy players across the globe being felt by this team. Navy and the Marine Corps represented so well. Many servicemen and women are cracking the game on the Academy website. As many can watch as possible. Station across the globe. 
Crocker attacks. Belver watching him. Powell, surface drying for him. That's beneficial. Malone, jump shot, scores! Steve Malone, what a move. Is he ever glad to be in this NCAA championship after missing last year with a broken jaw we told you about? Wired shut for a couple months. Said the pain. Watch the location of this shot, the jump shot. Watch him nail the lower corner. You talk about perfect placement. Malone now from the end zone. Powell with the look away pass, draws two. Earlier, now this was a controversial call. Is this a dive shot? Tiptoe in the crease. He's not in the crease, but his momentum clearly, that is a dive shot. Excellent call by the official. So that was a no goal, but then Valone gives the Orange a one goal lead. Morris and Looney help get possession for the mids. Pazaka, the faceoff ace. Watched by John Wright. Great job on close defense by 18 in the Orange jersey. And Syracuse sets up offensively. This is a defense, very inexperienced coming into the season. Ditzel, Wright, DiPietro, Panarelli, John Gallagher. They've improved. They gave up big goals in the month of March, but they've really clamped down. Orange by one in the third quarter where they have run away from many teams. Outscored their foes 69-39 on the season. 30 goal, third quarter advantage total. 5-3, they outscored the Jays at Hopkins on Saturday. 8-1 against Albany in the first round of this tournament. Up at the Carrier Dome. It's the time the Orange likes to run away and hide. Can Navy answer? Dingman. All 6'3", 250 pounds of them. How do you stop I like a great train up. like this? Navy standing around too much. They need to move off the ball. And Berger's pass too high to bring in. Bailey gets it back for the mids. That's a good matchup for Navy, the Dingman matchup, but they're all just standing around watching him operate. You've got to cut through. You've got to occupy your man. Here's Berger creating, scoring, John Berger! What acceleration from behind the orange cage. Equalizer for the mids. Berger's 10th goal of the season. Syracuse doesn't show him enough respect. They put a short stick midfielder, Danny Brennan, on him. And look at this seam. You'll see a nice little seam right here. He turns the corner, stings it. He's got a very, very quick first step. There was no help. And he puts that one over the shoulder of Piper. Berger, a team best. Nine multi-assist games this year. Now a big goal. Usually the feeder from behind the cage. Opportunistic there, Dave. Sense the matchup. Saw the space and capitalized. Pazaka is just dominating. Everyone he faces right now in the faceoff. X, it's incredible. Keo goes down to a mayor. Pazaka carries in himself. Pass for Bossy. Pazaka heads off on the sub. Taken back by Steve Looney. All three Looney brothers are colorblind. So Brendan, the oldest, who just received his ends in status, graduating Friday, Commissioned as an intelligence officer, can't go into certain levels of the Navy and Marine Corps because of that condition. Brandon Looney did not play high school lacrosse. He played high school baseball. And then came to the Naval Academy as a football recruit. Played some JV lacrosse, and that was his training ground. Here he is, four years later. One of the key components to their defense. Taylor Harris open. Maduro. Dingman thought about a shot. Left hand cradle in Dingman. Watch closely by the Syracuse defense. Not easy to bump him down. Harris, a little bit of room as Syracuse slides to recover. Bersner's got the short stick again behind the cage. Syracuse in back to their zone defense right now. Bersner, Madura, Adam Real, second midfield line. Look at all the ties. This has been close. Deadlocked at eight. National championship on the line. The Reigns has stopped here in Baltimore. Bersner gets a pick from Dingman. Scored a moment ago. 
Thought about a feed. Reel some room. Shot Madonna. Stop by Piper trying to rake it back into his crease. Freer Treadle will do it. Now the outlet pass for Ditzel. An amazing story. Started his career at Hobart. Perfect 4-0 student at Herkimer Community College in New York State before the transfer to Syracuse. Half a season for Ditzel to learn the defensive system and a starter on close defense. Big physical specimen defensively, improving every day, says his coach John Desco. Coach tells us Ditzel's like a sponge, just takes everything in. Brian Nee. He's got one of his direct relatives, his grandma, watching back home in Syracuse, New York. Although Brian's from this area, his grandma served in the U.S. Navy. Powell behind the cage. Dirty shot deflected away. Fell to a piece of it with his long stick. And the orange hang on to it. Five goals in the semifinals. The transfer from Hofstra University. He's got that Magnum P.I. mustache. And certainly feeling confident after a performance like that. Powell trying to get a pick and create. Cerns, this shot wide. Backed up by the Orange again. Crockett left hand trail. Spins, shoots wide again. Who's there? It's me. His grandma, Sally Daly, was lieutenant second grade. World War II for the U.S. Navy. After military service, went to Syracuse to get her nursing degree. She was a school nurse up at West Genesee, that legendary lacrosse program. And coming to you from NT Bank Stadium, Baltimore, Maryland. Dave Ryan, Quinn Kesnick, Lou Fels, Maul, field, our entire crew. The Orange in Orange. Navy the two seed in the home goals. And a great crowd today, great atmosphere for a national championship. Division one title at stake. And a tie game. Alone. Lindsay. Send it wide. Alone. Feeding again. Beyond the reach of Dorney. Loose ball. Midfield. Ditzel's got it. Big play for the Orange. They'll go back to Piper, the keeper. And Syracuse will try to break up field. Precision passing with long sticks here. Critical. Wright takes his time. However, makes a quick pass. And they lose the ball. Try to get that to Dory. Clipper Lennon got in his way. Why make that pass? Richie Meade been in the coaching business for so long. And finally gets that team. This is a team that didn't even make the playoffs last year. All John Desco has done in his six years at Syracuse is make the finals five out of six years after taking over from a legend, Roy Simmons Jr. Austin 99, UVA beat Princeton in 2002. Lost to Hopkins in the semifinals to John Desco last year. Exciting title in 02. A one goal 13 12 win after they had a 12 7 lead. Princeton came all the way back on him. And Mike Powell's the most outstanding player of that tournament. Seven points in the final. And the former Carthage Comet from upstate New York. His high school teammate, Dingman, handles here. Quick shot. Bouncer Piper. Goes down low, makes a nice stop. Piper now with eight saves. His last two have been smothering efforts. This ball doesn't really bounce off this sport grass surface, and he just smothered it. Got down on his knees. Lucked it for Park. Orange offensive end. Sharp angle shot. Score! Crockett. How did he fit that one between the pipe and the goalie? Brian second of this championship game. Incredible shot. It starts with the goalie, the lefty, the junior, 8-1 in NCAA games. Quick reaction, smothering it, controlling his rebound at the other end. Park with the lob pass and the breathtaking shot by Crockett. Sliver, there's no angle there, you can't do that. Somehow he beats Russell to the near side. Two goals for Crockett. Second leading score on this Orange team. Was shut out against Johns Hopkins on Saturday. Orange trying to come away with the ground ball. Bodies everywhere. Push call against Navy. And the Orange gets it back. The wing off the X doing a great job. And Brooks, Brennan, Panarelli for Syracuse. 
Powell triggers play as a waste of time. Slow whistle penalty flag coming against Navy. Powell feeding. Lacuna shot. It was blocked. And a man up fourth coming now for the Orange. Probably it's going to be a holding violation against Mitch Hendler. Crockett, what a shot that was. The whip shot just dropping down low and snapping it. And then Powell, with his ballistic quickness, drawing the foul against Hendler. He saw the finalizer move behind the cage. Mitch Hendler, known for his work ethic, the amount of time that he spends conditioning himself. Asked Hendler about facing Powell yesterday. He said, look, I've got a lot of help behind me. Defenders will be sliding. I'm a great goaltender. Yeah, I'm nervous about it. He's probably the best player out there, but up to the task. First man up try of the game for Syracuse. Syracuse a little rotating triangle there on the right side. Got a little sloppy Malone. A couple of whacks at it. Russell, way out of the crease. Trevor lost it. Good chance for Navy. Especially on that man up for Mike Felber, the junior long stick from Penfield, New York. Scrappy play on loose balls. Russell comes out of the cage. Felber, the ball trickles out of the stick twice. Frustration. Second chance opportunity now for Syracuse. Final moments melt away. The man up, we're back to six aside. Sink scores! Alex Sink, some room. Blasted by Russell. Syracuse up. By two, his second goal of the game. Zink, the lefty sniper, the second chance opportunity burns. It frees it right here. That's Mike Powell with the ball, folks. He's got four assists. Look at this seam. Tremendous look. Zink sets his feet prior to catching the ball, changes the plane of the shot. Watch this goes from high to low, and it handcuffs Matt Russell. The reaction from the goalie, he goes down, but look at his hands. You got to get the head of your stick down between your legs to make that save. Excellent fundamentals by Zink, but how about the look from Mike Powell? Zonka and Brennan Battle, here come the mids. Steve Looney, some room. Piper comes up big with a huge save. And now Syracuse, 10 seconds to get it out. And across the line of the box, John Desco says there's a push, please, in front of his bench, and that is the call. Syracuse will keep possession here, try and defeat the Navy ride. Mike Powell, much to Richie needs to grin, has got four assists in this game, folks. That helper a moment ago from Zink. Navy wants chaotic play. And when you call a tight game, you're not getting chaotic play. How about the athleticism from Park? Unbelievable play, folks. Splits a double team, hammered at midfield, on his knees, another spin move, and the Orange has it. It's not easy crossing that midfield line sometimes in this sport. Mike Powell, four points already. A feed down low, and it's called a pass over the cross of Crockett, who couldn't handle it. Tried the quick stick one time play, and it's a turnover. Long outlet pass. Here's Harris. Mid streak upfield. Down by a pair. Under three to go. Third quarter. Winner takes home the 2004 National Championship. Ben Horn, right hand cradle, circles the Syracuse cage. Lunkett watches him closely. Short stick defensive midi for the Orange. Haley for Bossy. And Gill who said, hey, we ran that delay play against Princeton at the end of the semis perfectly. That was his option to shoot. But he rattled off the pipe. Quick shot. Horn robbed by Piper. Jay Piper has made some big saves in his third quarter. His 10th save of the game came a moment ago, but Gill and the mids regain. Unsettled, here comes Barrett. Bossy. Think he hit the iron. Unbelievable. He can't believe it didn't go in, Joe Bossy. Now it's Piper. Got to go by his man, Bossy. Piper still with it. That's the goalie, folks. 
Throws it up for grabs. It's an open net. Maybe tries to take advantage of it. He'll settle it down. What an exchange as Syracuse tried to beat the aggressive ride of maybe and couldn't do it. Bursner Howe will handle under 90 ticks left in this fading third quarter clock. It was tough to see Bossy's shot. It looked like it might have hit the iron. Set his feet and let it rip. And how about that play? Dingman charging in. No, denied. Pipe for a piece of it. Can you believe? He shut down the All-American. Turkey flings it up for grabs again. Russell, dangerous play. It's another net. Knee trying to follow someone. Power. It stops. Handler recovers defensively and keeps out of the hole. Now power feeding. Intercepted by Navy. Can you believe the action? Seth Denola launched it. And a huge crowd, some 40,000. Here at MIT Bank Stadium, loving this end-to-end -end fast break action. It's incredible. They're on their feet being treated to one of the most action-packed finals that we have ever seen, Dave. Oh, right. Talk about end-to-end -end action. Oh, right. Rolling down 20 seconds here, quick third quarter. Oh, right. Dingman. Gets a nifty play. Knocked it loose. Dingman gets it back. Charging through. Send it wide. And a penalty flag drops with just eight seconds left. There's a lot of contact. Dave Pfeiffer taking a breather, but at the other end, it was an empty net. Mike Powell aimed this too fine. It's like a five-foot putt. He pings the post. It's Hendler trying to make the save. Unbelievable flurry of activity at both ends. You can see all the players searching for oxygen here, and Powell shakes his head for assists. So I talked about earlier, playing within the confines of the Syracuse system, pressing the cage, drawing the double team, and then spinning the rock. Final seconds will tick away here on the third quarter. Folks, if you have a remote control, don't touch the button. You have to leave it here. What a quarter for Piper. Man up to begin the fourth quarter for the Mids as they bid for their first ever NCAA title. Syracuse looks for its ninth for the head coach, John Desco. Exciting action, the fourth quarter to follow from Baltimore, Maryland. Don't go away. Underway fourth quarter. Syracuse in the orange, lower seed. Navy in the home goals, trying for their first ever NCAA title. It's a man advantage here to begin the fourth quarter. Bersner feeding. Bailey with it. Bossy. Left hand cradle for Gill. Bersner's got one already. Pass beyond the reach of Gill, but not out of bounds. Not enough mustard to it to reach the sideline. Syracuse shutting off Dingman inside. They're just taking Ian Dingman out of the equation and playing a four-man zone. Now they release. Man advantage about to release as well here, Quint, for the Orange. We're about to be six aside first. Quick stick go! Horn, airborne, a one-timer, pulling Navy to within one. His second of the game. It's Gil DeBersner, again, a little foot pass, and he just puts it to space, and Ben Horn flies high. Look away, super mo, covered well, point blank shot. Talk about skills. What a creative pass by Bersner. The temptation there is to throw it to the stick. He just lobbed it up, and he knew Horn, with that leaping ability, would go up and get it for him. Horn's brother Adam, with a classic 2000 Navy grad, all the way from the bay. Northern California, with three times All-American in high school out there. Panarelli, Park, and Brennan off the wings, battle. And the call will go against the mid. Syracuse gets possession on the procedure. Ten-second violation. Now. They were saying that Navy had the ball on their stick, and then they dropped it. Didn't get it into the offensive box in ten seconds. Berger's been a real thorn on the Syracuse side. Three assists so far. Powell has four helpers for the Orange. 
Setting the stage, one goal game. A national title on the line. Drew will take home a goal today. Which team settles for the silver? That is a question we'll answer from Baltimore. Knocked it with it. Lindsay. Oh, that left-hand shot. Still carries the first-team All-American midfielder. Malone pass. Crockett. Glory for Powell. A spectacular attacker in his final game in an orange uniform. Went for a sharp angle shot. Denied by Russell. Matt Russell, huge save. Outlet pass. Morris got a cross on it. What a pass! Harris, some room, Dan Harris missed the target. What a chance for number five in gold to tie it. And that would have sent this crowd into a frenzy on their feet. That's the transitional play, the hallmark of this Navy team. The storylines have been strong. Look at it! England shoved down by Mitchell. The end England so strong. A feed. His second of the game. We're all tied. Ten apiece. Navy getting terrific play from their attack. Dingman, Horn, Bursner, Bossy, the backside feed. Syracuse on the ropes. They're going to call timeout, but how about Bursner to Dingman? What a connection. The Navy fans and players love what they see. All tied, title game. Coca Cola brings you championship expressions. National Championship game, the home of the Baltimore Ravens. NFL Stadium for the big time college lacrosse event. Hey, Felsmo, what do you have down there? Russell came out, the goalie for Navy, with a sore stomach. His hand was clutching his midsection. They wanted to give him a couple minutes to recover. Watch the number 16, the goalie for Navy, Russell. He was not 100%. Back to action, guys. Gotta wonder if he's pulled a muscle. The way he's practicing throwing with his left hand is weird. Felder works cross field. Handler with a long stick. Gill had a poke loose, then recovers. Grant Gill spins, start on a shot. Panarelli, the great freshman, close defenseman for the Orange, got a piece of it with a long stick, but he's been out there since the draw is exhausted. Felder comes loose. How about the hustle from Steve Looney? He's a role player, yet he's the Navy co-MVP this year with Matt Russell. Panarelli getting that ball on the turf, causing some havoc for Syracuse, but Steve Looney's effort, amazing. Billy Looney. Bailey shot. Missed the target, backed up by Damon and Navy. Last ever collegial lacrosse game for Van Balen. He's had the Florida on flight school. In two days' time, Dingman backs in. Missed the target himself. A lot on that shot. Backed up by Billy Looney. Fresh goal to the right-hand cradle. Petro watches him closely. Off for Berger. What a star he's been for the mids. Small sky on the field. Biggest heart. Bossy 
he likes this matchup. It's an attackman against the midfielder, Jared Park. It's a pick from Bindman. Bossy in front. Kicked out. That one may have hit iron on the far side. I believe that was a pipe shot. By looks of the deflection, a lot of muster on that ball. ESPN's coverage, NCAA Women's College World Series continues tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern time. It's the first ever primetime live broadcast of the Women's College World Series title tilt. Cal, UCLA. It's a rematch of last year's championship game won by the Bruins. Kira Garrow will be in the circle again for UCLA. She threw a no-hitter over nine. That's extras. And women's softball last year in the title game. This team winning big games yesterday and last night. They set up the finale from Oklahoma City. Syracuse in the zone. They're packing it in their zone defense. Bossy. Gill, Bailey, and Dingman around the perimeter of the box. They'll go. Burns are trying to create. Bossy some room. Got a shot. Wise. Crank score! this entire possession. Bursner, change of direction by Bossy, steps around John Gallagher, and then nails this shot. Watch the location, location, location. Off hit, are you kidding me? Somehow sneaks that by Jay Python. Great punt, cool, calm and collected for Syracuse. The first mid lead since the second. 13.47 to be exact in the second quarter, the last time the Mids had a lead. Flag okay. down against Navy. Trying to change that. Flag is going, delayed penalty. Powell, quick pass. Second flag. Another flag drops. Lindsay for Crockett, ball hits the ground. That means the officials have got to call their penalty flags and define what's happened. The first one was a hold, and the second one was a high late hit against Mike Powell opens the door for a Syracuse offense. Two fouls against Navy. First was a hold. It happened prior to this. The flag was down already, but the good double team right there. Felbert, Riley, and then the second foul, let it roll here if you can, is on Mike Powell. That's okay, after Mike Powell passed that, he got freight trained from behind. And there you see the signature war paint that Mike Powell has made famous. He says he started doing that. At the Carthage Common High School. Always been a marked man. Two men up for Syracuse. Can they convert and tie the game? Crockett. Wines. Shot was blocked. Never got to Russell. Picked up by Malone. Powell. Syracuse works it. The man up tally, second of the game for Sean Lindsay. All tied at 11. This is a scary scenario. Freezer right here, freezer right here. This defender's got to get over here to cover Lindsay, and he just doesn't get there in time. Six on four, Syracuse gets the defense rotating, and the ball movement is faster than any player can run. Knee, jams it down low to Lindsay. Wonderful execution. Tommy Wallenquint takes the draw now at the X against Brennan. Pazanka been so successful that he might need a break. Steve Looney trying to scoop up that ground ball. Who's got possession? Brennan picks it out of the crowd. The freshman. The Petro. He said last year after his team lost to Johns Hopkins, a transfer from the Blue Jay program. He heard about it forever. Now a chance to change all that. Lindsay bidding for a second straight. Denied Russell. Russell is clearly in pain. Behind the play, waving to the bench. Is he going to have time to get out of there is a question. What a hit, what a play. Real. Adam Real, a huge hit. Regains for the mids. 
wrestles down on one knee in front of his crease. Looks like he's really hurt. Flag down. Flag goes down. Let's get it in Syracuse. Looney was denied. And Matt Russell is smarting, folks, as he gimpily gets over to the Navy bench. Could be a hand or wrist that he's holding. Lee Felsman on the sideline will get the report as soon as possible. That hurts. Russell clearly in pain. You talk about toughness, this kid. And here's some pressure. Eight minutes to go in a national championship game. Colin Finnegan, the freshman from St. Mary's in Annapolis. Russell knows he can't go on. He's waving over to the sideline. And there's Colin Finnegan. He's appeared in five games, 55 minutes. Save percentage, only 18%. Incredible. New keeper in the cage. Good shot, Bossy. Backed up by Bergner. Bossy's feeling it. Piper's telling the defense, you gotta, you gotta get out and cover this guy. It looks like a dislocated shoulder. Oh my gosh. Does that ever hurt? Come on. Wants to be an Navy SEAL, folks. Tells us he's in the Navy for that, not to cut across. What a challenge that is. Bossy left hand shot, deflected away. Right shoulder injury for Russell. Trying to pop that back into place. You saw it a moment ago. Lee Felsmo confirms that on the sideline for us. Bersner shots that wide. Back to even strength. Navy gets two shots, both are wide. Three for six. Navy now in the game with the man up. After they fail with that attempt. Seven and a half and counting. What a game today. A national championship to the winner. Gill in low. Horn shot. There's a lot of contact right outside that crease. Crease violation is the call against Navy. Syracuse gets a chance to beat the mid run. Just like hockey, physical play. Anytime the ball's inside defensively, you got to come with the body. You got to use those sticks. You've got to be vicious and violent inside, not for the kind hearted. And great defensemen, they have a nasty edge, and you saw that by the Syracuse interior deep. Keep an eye on the man between the pipes now for Navy. Colin Finnegan, folks, is a freshman, has to replace the injured Matt Russell and come into this situation. Unbelievable. Talk about pressure. His father, Ray Finnegan, an assistant with the Naval Academy squad. He's a pilot. Colin, a lefty. So it's a little change up for these shooters. Lindsay Crockett, quick stick. Reflected. The orange keeps it. We're coming here from MT Bank Stadium in Baltimore. Huge crowd on hand for the national championship game. Syracuse and the Mints. Powell attacking. Lindsay move. Six and a half and count remaining. Memorial Day thriller from the home of the Baltimore Ravens. This NFL stadium packs. Cards and bucks coming up. As soon as we wrap up business, and crown a champion. Rocket shot, backed up nicely by Powell. Excellent defense by Dan Harris and Bucky Mars. Rocket's got two goals. At the end of the 2000 championship game, won by Syracuse. Ryan Powell looked up to his brother Mike, who triggers down the far corner. Mike was a senior in high school, then at Carthage High School, and said, you will be the next number 22. Pass the torch right then and there. Now it's Powell. Handling just outside that crease, trying to continue the Syracuse tradition and win a second title. He fell. Lost the stick, but lost to win it. Navy tries to regain. Basanko with the double team. He saw the back of the 22 jersey and slid so effectively. Ripper Lennon, unsettled. And his attack, Lennon charging, Scott! Well timed on 
the other end. Clipper Lemon's only got two goals coming in. And that's what I meant earlier. Navy doesn't know a yellow light there. They continue to attack in transition. Panarelli, the freshman with a long stick, made a huge play. Syracuse gets a timeout. Barely in time. John Desco in the orange. A little bit of trouble down by one. For the conclusion of the national championship game to follow. Don't go away from Baltimore. Division one lacrosse championships. Brought to you by Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. Richie Mead, 10 years, the head coach at Navy has seen literally dozens of his former players go overseas to serve in the Navy or Marine Corps, many of which were involved in the initial invasion of Iraq. There's a lot of emotion connected with that sort of time. I probably feel a lot better than most Americans because I know the quality of the people that are going to go after these guys. We're, uh, we're sending our brightest and our best our, our most courageous, our wildest, uh, and uh, they, will, they will do the job. They will protect this country. I know that, uh, you know, so far it hasn't touched the Naval Academy lacrosse team, uh, and, and I pray that it doesn't, but it has affected the Naval Academy and our family there. So many former Navy mid lacrosse players have made the effort some all the way from Nigeria and Africa to make the trip here to see the lacrosse national semifinal and a chance to watch Richie Mead, their former head coach, win the school's academy's first ever national championship. Navy in one goal games. The frustration of the past five seasons has been reversed this year. Like that, the story of Clint Burke came all the way from Nigeria. Promised if the team won, against Cornell last week in the quarterfinals. He'd somehow get to Baltimore, and he did it. Stadium is full of stories just like that. The loyalty runs deep. Syracuse wants to continue its incredible tradition. Lindsay right-hand cradle, rolling down to five minutes. Left in regulation. Doherty, below. Down low, Crockett scores! Patrick. Brian Crockett means we're tied at 12. Matt Russell, Navy's first team All-American, is merely a bystander. Watch the circular passing. One, two, three. Terrific ball movement by the Orange. And Finnegan, way out of position, comes out of his goal crease. And Crockett shoots it around him. Finnegan, the freshman, in reserve duty. Seth Denola was the original starting goalie this season. He's playing long stick midfield right now for the Naval Academy. Finnegan quit play just in five games this year. Did not have a one loss record at all. All in mop up duty. And now he's on the field of the national championship on the line. Can you believe that? Ray goes back to the long sticks to Piper. And the Orange try to break out. Here's Jack Park. Enduring a chest injury. And that one goal thrilling win last weekend up at Cornell, Ithaca, New York, over Georgetown. Helping bring the yards to this very moment. Navy's got to fight another uphill battle. A year at the Naval Academy that started with Hurricane Isabel in the fall. Dealing with adversity on a daily basis. A lot of the great students we told you about. The high school football star, Henniger High, in the city of Syracuse. That's a pick from Brett Bucktooth. Now it's Powell. In his last Syracuse performance, Rommel. Can't pull the trigger. Back off for Powell as the sun finally peeks out for the first time on this championship Monday. Good defense by Bucky Morris and then Hendler. Got a couple of whacks in on Rommel. Powell from the top of the box starts it. Worked down low, let's go! Rommel again! Knee the dive, make it knee. The go-ahead goal 
on the freshman goalie as Russell can only watch. Mike Powell shaking and baking, draws the double team. And then knees, splendid face dodge, bringing that ball in front of his body and then wrapping it around Finnegan. Knees got three, Powell unofficially with five assists. He had seven points. And the most outstanding player of the 2002 championship. Critical faceoff. Kazanka. Keo. One by the Knicks. Chance to tie again for Navy on this possession. Baseball is coming next. Pirates and Cards. Bill, a pass for Baylor. Billy Looney. The freshman charging in, but does not pull the trigger. Each team does have one timeout left. Under three to go in regulation. Dingman, spin move. Ditzel watching him. Ian Dingman still has it, right-hand cradle. Too much standing around by the other Naval Academy players. The freight train trying to get free. Not much muster on that. Piper, easy save. He's got to be careful. Bergeron right behind, but he can't enter that crease area. It's a safe zone for the goalies in lacrosse. Now a huge clear. Can they make it? To Petro, speed in bounds. What a play to the Petro of Syracuse. Unbelievable job. Tiptoe on the sideline. Had he hit the white chalk, it's a turnover. Keep away time for the arms. Turnover. Unbelievable. Pluck it too high. For Ballone and John Desco oh. is in a state of shock. Navy wants a timeout. My goodness. Plunkett to Valone. Emotions run high in a national championship game. Which team will take home the crown? We'll find out next. Powell's at Syracuse continues leave Valpo, doesn't it? Hey, fellas, the uh, tradition and the legacy of Syracuse it starts with number 22. In 1988, Gary Gate put the jersey on. He was an All-American three straight years, and actually he won a championship three straight years. Then it went to Charlie Lockwood, four years All-American, one more championship. It went to Casey Powell, then it went to Ryan Powell, then it went to Michael Powell. All All-American years, seven of their eight championships following the number 22. Charlie Lockwood at least was challenged by former coach Roy Simmons Jr. He wanted to take his number from West Genesee High School up there in Central New York. His number seven instead. The coach said, Charlie, take a real number. Challenge yourself. And Charlie Lockwood took 22 to continue that great tradition. Yes, the Powell family is here from Carthage. Intimating that this could be his last game. I'd hate to see that happen. Mikey, these fans love you. We need you in lacrosse. Keep playing. Mom Sue whispered into his ear when he was introduced on senior day. Adversity causes some men to break, others to break records. Mike is trying to do something that his brothers could not do. That's win two national titles. He's broken a lot of records, hasn't he? Maybe needs to clear quickly and efficiently. Baseball's next year on ESPN. Unfinished business all the way across field here in Baltimore. What a moment for the Mets can. They tie at 13. Well executed clear by the midshipman. Bossy being extra careful. Melting fourth quarter clock here in 90 ticks remaining in the national championship game. Bailey gets a pick from Gill. Person lunging keeps the play alive, but barely. That could have meant the Navy season. Person still has it. Two. Looney backs in. Thought about a creative shot. Way too high. 
for Bailey. It's a loose ball that reaches the midfield line. Syracuse trying to rake it free. The orange roll. Knee attacking. Powell scores! Oh, Mike Powell does it for Syracuse! The family from northern New York loves every moment of this 22. And a spectacular run to a potential championship. Talk about a storybook ending. Knee makes an amazing play on this ground ball. We're going to use his body. Shields the defender. Flicks it to himself. And then Mike Powell, the flash, the finesse. He kept it simple that time. Brian Knee with the assist. Powell, so calm, so cool, so confident. The signature, the tail end. And the exclamation point for Mike Powell, over 300 career points. One and five for six. Quint is a spectacular Michael Powell, while Matt Russell, with a dislocated shoulder, can only watch in frustration. Knee made a season-saving play at the midfield line a moment ago, but maybe he's got time. 15th counting for Dingman. They can't wait too long. Ron Dixel's been a great matchup. Two behemoths all day long. Dingman back to mid. Ian Dingman shot. Score! Another Carthage comic answers. Powell to Dingman. And folks, do we ever have a critical faceoff coming from the X now here in Baltimore? It is a one-goal Syracuse lead. Dingman isolating. He'll get no help defensively. And just handcuffs. Jay Piper. 40 seconds. Talk about the importance of faceoffs. Here we go. Pazanka will take it. Lennon in the X for Syracuse. The fans know this is the biggest moment of the game. Pazanka's got it. Pazanka charges. His shot deflected away last second. Park got it. Syracuse has the ball. Syracuse got their first pipe for the backup behind the cage. With 31 seconds left, the Orange a chance now to salt it away. DePietro throws it away. But Ditzel backs it up. The ball should, should have be been inbounded Piper. behind the goal. Should have been Piper and starting play. The officials exactly the right. Unbelievable moment. High for the goalie from behind the cage will trigger play. Pazanka streaking in. Off the faceoff. Look at the hustle play by the Orange trailing him. It's Jared Park at the last second, saving Syracuse's season. And then because Bossy was front swinging there to maybe receive the ball, Jay Piper, that man, was closest to it when it went out of bounds. Clock reset to 31 seconds. John Desco has one timeout left, and he will take it now. No more timeouts for either side. A dramatic finish from Baltimore. Can Syracuse hang on for a title? Fourth quarter. Just moments remain. 31 seconds standing between Syracuse and yet another national championship. In Division I lacrosse, the Navy fans who have packed this stadium. The Dingmans are there watching closely. Ian Dingman's older brothers, one in the Marine Corps, one in the Army, are hoping somehow that the ride can defeat the Syracuse clear, get the ball back for the equalizer and force sudden victory overtime. What an amazing game. Really the difference, Jay Piper in the cage, 15 saves. The Naval Academy has only made six. We've never had more than a two goal swing. The tempo has been incredible. 45,000 on hand have been treated to the best national title game that I can remember in 15 or 20 years. The pals who have made the seven-hour drive from Carthage, New York, can barely stand to watch. Big League Baseball, Cards and Pirates coming up next here on ESPN. Neither team has a timeout left. 
Lee Felsmo, what's happening in the huddles? Well, John Desco, guys, wants, if there's any chaos, he wants the ball sent all the way up the field. You see, he puts Michael Powell back to start. He wants it all the way up in front of the goal on the far end, not out of bounds in front of the goal. Back to you. Wow. You never see Powell on his defensive side of the field. The best ball handler for John Desco. Trying to defeat the Navy ride, get it clear, and clinch a championship. Navy pressing down with all their players. There's an empty net. Their goalie, Colin Finnegan, is out of the net. The best player on the field will try to make the biggest play of his Syracuse career. Defense is set. Powell, the fastest, the most athletic. Flip upfield. Ball for grabs. Finnegan it picks it up. Lost in midfield by Navy. Regained by Syracuse again and Lindsay. Interference call. Interference away from the ball against Syracuse and Navy's got a chance. Unbelievable. They go for the tie. Graham Gill charging in. Ball loose. Intercepted by Darney. Only seconds left. Flings it up in the air. And it's over. For the ninth time, the Syracuse Orange have won the national championship. They are kings of the college lacrosse world once again. That's right, Steve Malone. It is celebration time in central New York. Let the party begin. A year defined by tragedy and adversity in college across Cornell, Ohio State. The sentimental story at the Naval Academy. Hopkins and Princeton here for the final faceoff. But Mike Powell's farewell, certainly sweet for the Syracuse Orange, nine titles.